All right, welcome back to another episode of Debug the Future. As always, I'm your host, Dahim, co-founder and CEO of Mesha. So lots to uh, unpack in the last few weeks, lots been going on. Um, I think one interesting thing is that this podcast is slowly becoming more and more a Web3 podcast, which is a natural evolution anyways, because Web3 at this point is like the internet in 1995, 1996, super early days, but all the talent is migrating to Web3 and you're starting to see some really exciting projects. So it's really where all the excitement is. It's like these days discussing fintech. You can't really discuss fintech without discussing crypto. And Web3 is basically powered by crypto. So it's all just blending together into the next uh, internet revolution. So before we jump in, one interesting thing that got my eye and I wanted to flag it because a lot of the listeners of this podcast are first time crypto investors is the fact that if you you may or may not have seen that there was a token launch called uh, Squid, which is after the super successful Netflix show called Squid Game. If you've seen that show, it has absolutely no relevance to the token. And it was very clear to every single person slightly involved in the industry that the token was going to be quite a scam. And it turned out to be a complete scam. It jumped like 230,000% to some crazy number like that uh, to like, $2,300 in like 24 hours. And then immediately the people who created it, pulled it out, made a couple of million bucks. And then uh, thousands of users and people were left, you know, with absolutely nothing. So I think that's an interesting point as well. We, you know, we are in a gold rush or some people may call it a bubble. I wouldn't really call it a bubble, but we are in a gold rush in crypto. And it is important to understand like why you're investing and what you're investing just because someone see something going up is not the way to invest. I mean, it is human nature, but it is a super important like red flag, like in a token like this is a good sign of why you shouldn't do that. The other big news uh, that came out recently was uh, Facebook's uh, name change. I know a lot of people have uh, written and spoken and talked and like debated about this, but it is important for us to cover it. it like it would be disingenuous of us not to. And uh, Facebook changing its name to Meta was uh, quite a, not really a surprise if you've been thinking if you've been seeing you know what they've been doing and like what they've been building and really their intentions. They've largely stated Mark Zuckerberg has largely stated that the future of Facebook is going to be a, a metaverse uh, oriented company. While from just a, an optics perspective, I think everyone at Facebook also knew that you know this is like from a PR perspective as low point as when the Cambridge Analytica scandal came out. But it is important that I think realistically, even they realize that like everyone will call them out for just trying to uh, deflect by doing a name change. But it is emblematic in some ways of like how Google became Alphabet. You'll still call the company Facebook, but there are various divisions in it. Now, uh, Facebook or Meta, as we would say now, has pledged like something like $10 billion to build out the metaverse this year, and they are pumping a lot of money into it. So they are putting their mouth, uh, money where their mouth is, but it is interesting to see like where this will go. So we'll dive a bit into like, what is the metaverse in a second and like how this impacts uh, a variety of industries. But one interesting thing to always like temper all these expectations is that, you know, Google has been plowing billions of dollars into self-driving cars. We're nowhere near what where we want it to be. Um, and the AR, VR, uh, p promised revolution from a few years ago has still yet to materialize. The metaverse uh, angle may solve for that. But every few years, companies really try to go off to the next big thing. This is either, you know, trying to like lift up their stock price because you know the narrative is stagnating amongst investors, or it can just be like, you know, this is where they are actually passionate or concerned about. It can just be also like, you know, to get the best developers, they need them to come for that specific reason. But whatever it is, um, a lot of times these like promised lands don't uh, pan out, but I do think the metaverse is going to be like a realistic uh, goal for most of these companies. So the metaverse, if you are not familiar with it, is for lack of, in the most simplest uh, example, it would be just like a digital version of the real world. I've covered it before in the previous podcast, but the best way to think of it is if you wear like digital goggles for lack of a better word, you will be transported to like almost like a digital uh, alternate reality. And you see this a lot in sci-fi movies, you know, Matrix is a great example and like any other type of like sci-fi movie, you have these dystopian 
uh, visions of people wearing like plug always plugged in wearing goggles and not being tethered to reality. And that is kind of where the metaverse uh, promises to be. Now, if you think of it from a realistic scenario, we are already kind of in what I would call a miniverse, which is that 99% of our lives are digital already, right? We consume media digitally. We talk to people digitally. Zoom meetings are happening digitally. So largely a lot of our lives are already uh, online. This just kind of formalizes it. The second part of this is if you're thinking of the metaverse as an alternate reality and like, should it even exist? I mean, one, it's inevitable, but two, if people want a break from like their actual reality, like who are we to say no to that? Obviously there are a lot of like ethical concerns and all like that would come up as you basically build an alternate reality. But that is not for me to ponder today. Uh, the Facebook's metaverse will be also exactly like what all other types of metaverses are going to be. You, you buy like a headset and you basically can plug in, you can play games, you can like interact with people, you can chat, you can hang out, you can listen to music, you can go for digital concerts. You can basically live your life online. And for a lot of people in Web3 and the metaverse industry, because it's very much powered by crypto, having a centralized company like Facebook, which never mind centralization is one largely regarded as like this century's most evil company and two very centralized very all the decision making comes from one man which is the antithesis of the decentralization crypto universe this like obviously has like made them furious and they're all like you know screaming from the rooftops about how this is not what the metaverse needs to be and it's an interesting way of thinking of it right like if you're creating an alternate reality who controls it because right now we all live in countries governed either by like nation states, um, governments, dictatorships, whatever it is, but like there is a form of government and now you're basically creating an alternate reality for that. And for Facebook to do that more than even like Google or Microsoft or anyone is a huge deal because as a single entity, Facebook is the largest single entity of uh, human beings ever created, right? Like you have over a billion users using Facebook every day on WhatsApp, on Instagram, on Facebook, the app itself, the who uses the Facebook app, still have absolutely no idea. Um, and so to have that, like have Facebook even convert 50% of those people into the metaverse, you're talking like 500 million people, which Facebook controls, that's a huge deal. Now from Facebook's angle, that's this is like a pot of gold, if you think of it, right? Um, obviously they're gonna get a cut of different things, but just from, if you take a step back and you just think of it, Facebook is going to create a continent that's a digital continent with over 500 million people in it. And as an advertising company, this means that they're going to own all the billboards in that metaverse, right? So you're talking about uh, Facebook basically having every billboard and advertising space in North America, real or digital, but now in the metaverse. And while they may claim they're not going to do that, we like they have never lived up to their uh, promises in terms of transparency or fairness. So there has been a lot of that, and that's a legitimate concern. Now, I think what's realistically gonna happen is that you're gonna get these like siloed metaverses to start off with Google's building their own, Apple will build their own. Um, there are a lot of startups doing it uh, in crypto land and, and non-crypto land as well. And so really you're gonna start getting like a digital planet Earth where like there are different like continents that you have to like tra travel from one to the other. And that's going to be the next big company will actually probably be the one that can help you like bridge each one. It still does look super goofy. You have to wear a headset and you're going to just watch people like wearing these headsets roaming around their rooms, <laughs> interacting with the digital world. But I think we are in a stage where it is inevitable that more and more people migrate to that. Uh, what that means for society, we'll see. Obviously, every single sci-fi author and like sci-fi movie has like waxed poetic about it, but it will be an it, we are at that cusp of a dramatic societal shift in it, far more dramatic than even probably what like social media did to society and to democracy, et cetera, et cetera. So that is Facebook's big news. Um, you are going to see a lot of activity around in the tech industry around that. There's been a lot of people talking about it, but it will be interesting to see what actually happens. Cool. And then just moving on to other stuff, uh, I wanted to also talk a bit about what a DAO is. So DAO, I'm going to spend 
as little time as possible. And the reason I uh, also rope in why I'm bringing it up with a Facebook meta name change. Um, so a DAO in the crypto land is what we call a decentralized autonomous organization. Um, and it sounds super fluffy to hardcore capitalists. And in some ways it is, right? It's basically how do you take a bunch of people and let them like either invest together or uh, formalize a lot of their decision-making through code. Uh, and the best way to think of it is, and I know a lot of people are going to get super upset when I give this example, but a digital, like a crypto co-op is the best way to think of it, right? Like, so you have a bunch of people, they put in money uh, into a DAO and then the DAO like executes on it. Everyone gets a vote uh, in what the DAO can do and all, for example. So you have governance in the DAO, but the DAO is that, uh, organization that ensures transparency, that no one is like, you know, siphoning off the funds, etc. So DAOs have like started rising in popularity in the last year or so. Uh, and the best example is a lot of them are pooling in money to buy NFTs. And really it is the next evolution of the crypto verse, right? So you have people who largely crypto has been a one player game in some ways where like you can invest. But the core part of crypto and the reason it's really like struck a chord with people is the community. And then this is especially true in uh, the world of NFTs, where crypto and the NFT is what enables you to enter a community and you st start finding a sense of belonging. So the natural evolution of that, obviously, is that you go to what is a DAO, which is how do you then take this community and formalize it so that they can start making decisions together in investments or in anything, really. And so you give each person a vote and I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say 10 of us uh, are in a community, we create a DAO, we all get a vote. It can be either in how many tokens you have. So the DAO can have its own token um, or it can be on different rules of like how you set the voting process. It can be that anyone can join the DAO if you own that token. It can be that you have to apply for permission and that the majority of the DAO has to approve it. So you can formalize all these rules through code. Now you're probably saying, why can't you just do that um, in like a WhatsApp chat group, right? So there are a couple of things, right? So the first is um, trust. And this is what crypto and blockchain is inherently designed around. If you don't know everyone um, in that DAO, for example, so let's say you go from 10 people to 100 people, are you 100% confident that one person isn't going to like steal the central pool of money? Um, or how do you make sure that everyone's aligned in terms of incentives to do what is better for the majority of the group? And so that's really where the DAO comes in and allows people to uh, formalize that decision making in a trustless environment. Um, and so the reason I brought up DAO is because one of the interesting parts of where a lot of the crypto world is going is that a lot of crypto projects are decentralizing even the decision making and moving to DAOs uh, so that the community can even like have a say in governance and all. And so a lot of people uh, had that natural reaction that maybe the Facebook metaverse um, or meta, I'm not, I'm not going to call it meta, we're all going to call it Facebook. The Facebook metaverse uh, should be run by DAOs where everyone gets a token and then the entire community has a say. It is a slightly util utopian concept in some ways. And at a certain point, uh, you have the tyranny of the crowd as well as the central core reason why like certain uh, people like certain governments like didn't work like a communist a pure play communist government because every if everyone has a say in all gets uh super complicated and there are obviously some fundamental issues with the DAOs, but i do think it is going to be the future of uh the cryptoverse um as well as you're going to see it more and more uh happening and now obviously you can see it being formalized in some really interesting ways so like the us certain states are starting to like recognize DAOs as legal entities this is really important, right? Because at the end of the day, um, if that DAO is making an investment, then you need a legal entity to start like uh, having like ownership rights and all that are outside of like the digital world and in the real physical world as well. So that, you know, if you have to go to court or whatever, uh, that DAO needs to exist as a, not as a corporate entity, but something similar to it. And so the US has actually been pretty progressive with this. And I think that really speaks to the decentralized like federal nature of uh different states having a lot of say in it, but that's its own topic. Um, and so if there are two things I just want to quickly wrap up with, one is the metaverse is coming, better get ready for it. A lot of the world will start interacting in many hours a day in the metaverse. Companies will probably run entire offices in the metaverse. 
if you're already doing a Zoom, you'll basically now be asked to like plug in, come to office in the metaverse. You'll basically see each other. It'll feel like a weird video game slash Zoom meeting kind of experience. Um, and then the second part, if you're taking away, is DAOs are also coming. 2022 is going to be the year of the DAO. Um, and that's really going to fundamentally change for the better, at least I hope, how decision making is done, not only in the crypto world, but in finance and in the general economy. Uh, that's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for joining in. As always, uh, follow me on Twitter, drop a comment on Instagram if you have any questions or any feedback. I'm all ears and I hope to uh, hear from you guys soon. Thanks so much.